Are there people peddling bad theology in your church? This is Vince Miller. Today, I'd like to begin by giving a call out to Michael Forte from Astoria, Oregon. Thank you, Michael, so much for purchasing materials from our website. It's a great way to support our ministry. Thanks for getting behind us. We appreciate you. This is for you today, Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading verse 10. Paul says, I have confidence in the Lord that you will take no other view and that the one who is troubling you will bear the penalty, whoever he is. So picking up with the text yesterday, Paul points out that the bad bacteria of legalism is stemming right here from one bad person. He assumes that this guy, whoever he is, is the peddler of all the, the bad theology that's spreading its way through the churches in Galatia. So if you are a new believer, you need to know that sometimes people peddle bad theology. Some people and pastors peddle bad doctrine that is actually harmful to the gospel, to the truth. Usually it stems from some charismatic guy peddling a charismatic idea and then he's spreading it to people and to churches around him. In my lifetime, I have seen this happen. It spread just like it did here in the churches in Galatia. So how do we respond to bad theology? Well, here is a clear three-step process. Are you ready? First and foremost, you need to know that not all theology is good theology. <laughs> bad theology does exist, and it's harmful, and you need to be aware of it. As discussed yesterday, it's kind of like a bacteria that will infect and actually alter the composition of the truth itself. Second, you need to make sure you're listening and learning from people who actually teach the Bible. <laughs> the people and the pastors that you listen to, well, they need to be people who actually open up the Bible. And they should be people who actually read from the Bible and reference it and then live their lives according to it. Usually these guys have a, a rich understanding of biblical truth and teachings because they don't skip over text and they subject their life to the text. In the case of the Galatians, Paul was that guy. Paul's intention with this letter right here was to guide them back to the purity of the gospel. And fortunately for the churches there, they had enough sense to engage with the issue and Actually, listen to Paul, who was driving him back to a very pure gospel. In the same way, we need to listen to proven teachers like Paul, <laughs> and not just simply the ones with the latest and greatest charismatic ideas. So seek out great biblical teachers as you are growing in your faith. And lastly, third, and most importantly, the most effective way to detect bad theology is to raise obvious questions when something seems off and then demand an answer to your logical and biblical question that comes from the Bible. You know, when I hear something from a teacher that raises a red flag, questions usually start firing off in my mind, right? Things like, what was that again? How exactly does that work? You want me to do what exactly? For example, suppose you're listening to a teacher who declares one day that all the men ready to go to the next step in their faith need to line up at the altar for a circumcision ceremony, and Pastor Richard is going to lend a hand. <laughs> in that case, some questions should be firing off in your mind. Questions like, Pastor Richard is going to do what exactly? Now, even the suggestion might seem absurd to you, but that's precisely what happened in Galatia. And men weren't lining up to do this thing. They lined up to do it because false teachers had manipulated the Old Testament law to prove a point that was invalid. And it appears people lined up without questioning it. Their explanations failed to account for the fact that everything in the Old Testament law pointed to one man, one birth, one death, and one resurrection accomplished in Jesus and not the rite of circumcision. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you detect bad theology and it doesn't prove itself in Jesus' accomplished work on the cross, then it's time to ask Pastor Richard that question that's stirring around in your mind before you unbuckle your pants. <laughs> I love you guys. I pray this has blessed you today. If it has, share it with someone else and hopefully you get a good response from them. But I will see you hopefully back here again tomorrow.